Hello, in this video we're going to look at monopoly and network externalities. A network externality is a situation where a person's demand for a good depends on the demand for the good by others. Here a positive network externality, the consumer's value of the good increases as more consumers use the good. So things like social media, eBay, Facebook, Twitter, fax machine, computer software, these will become more valuable to the individual consumer if there are more and more other people using these things. A bandwagon effect is a positive externality created from a fad or a popularity-based effect. So sometimes children's toys, for example, a fidget spinner, uh, maybe Nintendo video games, something like that. Let's do a problem. A monopoly operates for two periods. In period one, the firm's inverse demand is given by the following, P equals 20 minus Q, where Q is a quantity demanded of a good with a network externality. In period two, the demand for the good is given by the following. If period one's output is less than 16, the demand in period two will look like that in period one. If period 1's output is greater than or equal to 16, the demand in period 2 will be different and will now equal P equals 20 minus 0.25Q. The cost of production is given by C equals 4Q. And we want to find out how much output should the firm produce in each period. We're going to ignore the time value of money here. In period 1, we have our inverse market demand. Let's get the revenue function making our substitution in for P, multiplying through by Q, and now taking the derivative is marginal revenue. And you'll notice marginal revenue is the inverse demand with a slope that is twice as steep. And let's get marginal cost by taking the derivative of the cost function. With respect to Q, we get back 4. And you'll also note in this example, average cost is also 4. So marginal cost equals average cost in this problem. Setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, solving for Q. The firm should produce eight units of output and sell those units at $12 each, just plugging this $8 back into the inverse demand. And the firm's profit in this case uh, can be calculated as price minus average total cost times quantity. And we get profit here of $64 in period one. So since period 1's output is less than 16, period 2's demand will be unchanged. The firm won't experience this positive network externality. So we're going to just maximize profits in period 2 by setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Since the inverse market demand is the same as in period 1, marginal revenue is unchanged. And this calculation here will be unchanged. So marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Q still equals 8. And the price equals 12 in period 2. The profit, once again, is $64. So the total profit from this strategy here is $128. $64 of profit in period 1 plus $64 of profit in period 2. Let's say the firm engages in introductory pricing to take advantage of network externalities to enjoy increased demand in period two. So in order to enjoy increased demand in period two, the firm must sell at least 16 units. So let's say the firm sells 16 units of output in period one. So here is our inverse market demand. And the firm's going to sell 16 units to get that higher demand in period two. So plug that 16 back into this inverse market demand and the firm would set a price at $4. And at a price of $4, uh, marginal cost equals average cost, and profit here is just going to be zero. In period two, because Q equals 16 in period one, the inverse market demand is higher in period two. It now becomes the following. And now we're going to profit maximize in period two with this new higher demand. So calculating the revenue from this inverse market demand and getting marginal revenue. Setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. The firm would produce 32 units in period two and sell those units at $12 each, just plugging this 32 back into our inverse market demand here. And the firm's profit in period two would be $256.
So to sum up then, overall profit by taking advantage of these positive externalities is going to be $256. So offering a low introductory price in period one creates a positive network externality that gives the firm higher profit than following a period-by-period -period profit maximization strategy. All right, that's it.